Leeds United fans have acquired for themselves a very bad reputation and people are very fearful as to what is going to happen in the next season unless something very serious is done. When they all get together, the brain goes out of the window. And I think that's when it happens, when the atmosphere becomes so electric that then the people with less self-control lose and become yachts. The Home Secretary, David Warrington, and a senior police officer speaking this week after the violence which marred Leeds United's return to the First Division. Saturday should have been a day of celebration, United beating Bournemouth to win this Second Division Championship trophy. Instead, it would be remembered for all the wrong reasons. 120 arrests, 20 people injured, and a damage bill yet to be fully assessed. What happened last weekend has been seen throughout the world. The Bournemouth police say there was a level of violence never witnessed before. So why is it that, once again, the worst forms of football hooliganism are connected with the club? Can anything more be done to stop it happening in the future? Later in the programme, the policeman in overall charge of crowd control in West Yorkshire, a former Home Secretary and local MP, and the club's chairman will be giving their views. But first, we've gained special access this week to the police intelligence units at both Bournemouth and West Yorkshire. The first of our two reports comes from Grant Mansfield in Bournemouth. The marauding mob called it the invasion of Bournemouth, not a pitch invasion, but an assault on the whole town. Today's traditional seaside scenes form a stark contrast. Bournemouth has repelled the invaders, cleaned up the mess, and is even prepared to entertain another game of football. But despite a concerted effort to return to normality, there are still reminders of the weekend Leeds United came to town. A burned out motorbike, a newspaper billboard. And at the pub where the rioting began last Friday evening, no one is forgetting. It was at the holiday revival that Leeds supporters revived a favorite tradition, soccer hooliganism. The screwdriver was hurled at staff. Today, the bar is quiet and empty. But this time last week, 800 people were packed in here. Drunk and dangerous, this was the chosen venue to kick off a weekend of violence. It got to the point where it's just so frightening, you know, that we actually, the female personnel actually went into the office, actually locked ourselves in, you know, and that was it. We just stayed there, basically. I mean, we just, we were in here, you know, behind the door, the door was locked and things were coming over. I mean, there was like these sort of things that they were throwing at us. This just narrowly missed me by a few inches. It was just, it was petrifying. Ironically, Shirelle was born and bred in Leeds, and so was her boss. I've always, uh, I've always sort of kept in touch with Leeds, my Leeds, my Leeds relations, but I find it very difficult to be able to to speak to anybody with a Yorkshire accent anymore. It got so scary, I just ran. They started coming, they were banging on this ledge up here. There's glasses up there, they were all coming forward and they were hurling abuse. So I just ran, I grabbed my bag and ran. It was too scary to stay here. The police say it's time now for the thugs to be scared. A special incident room has been set up and a clear message is emerging. Those people who came here, the hardcore, if they think they've got away with it, they're much mistaken. Because it won't be many weeks and months when I shall ensure there's a large police operation knocking on their door, door early in the morning in order to arrest them for serious public order and other criminal offences. They've got my assurance of that. Thank you. Read all about it. Thank you. It's confidence boosted by knowledge that Bournemouth is one of the most security conscious towns in Britain. There are dozens of closed circuit cameras on the seafront. In addition, the police were operating another nine in and around the ground. They've collected 50 hours of video pictures, together with thousands of still photographs. The Sunday Express has shown a good picture of a St John's ambulance man. He's initially trying to restore order, but between that first picture 
and the second one, he's been laid out. Yeah. Now, do you reckon you caught that on your video? Yeah, I think there's a strong likelihood that. While the police try to establish what happened, the local newspaper is trying to establish why it happened. The paper collected hundreds of violent snapshots, but the picture desk has voted this the most shocking image. It isn't a moment of violence, but it is proof that the rioting was planned and orchestrated. And what of the people responsible? Criminals, morons, I mean, hooligans. What word can one use? What would I like to say to them? Well, on this programme... <laughs> Stay away from Bournemouth. We don't really want you down here, What do you feel about the prospect of Leeds coming back to Bournemouth for another game at some point in the future? I think I might emigrate. <laughs> Well, if the hooligans are planning violence at a sophisticated level, then the West Yorkshire police have been meticulously organising countermeasures. This week, we've been behind the scenes with their football intelligence teams who have some disturbing insights into the implications of the weekend events. Peter Pitt reports. Trying to take on McNabney outside, he's round the back. Clock! one now. Moments of pure ecstasy for the supporters and players of a Leeds club on the glory trail in the 70s. A glory mirrored this week at a celebration of their return to the big time. But if Elland Road had on its considerable best face, there was the shadow here too of another kind of 70s fame the club are desperate to avoid in their hour of triumph. But the spectre of a nightmare was there, in print at least. The nightmare returns. What does that actually mean? Pardon? What does the nightmare return mean? Well, I would imagine that's what's been happened over the last weekend. They're just publicising it over what's happened last weekend. It's going to all start over again with other teams. Like, at first we haven't played for eight, nine years. Like, Tottenham that I've got, that I'm known to have. Hooligans and stuff like that, it's going to all start again. The same people are going out of Bournemouth are looking for a fight, are going to go to the places where there are people down there are going to give them a fight. Bred out of past troubles, there's now at Elland Road, with the full cooperation of the club, a police surveillance operation so sophisticated it's banished forever. Total anonymity for troublemakers in the crowd. Yeah, 1314, can you give us a description what this lad's wearing and his location in the West Stand? Is a uh, youth with a sweatshirt with two flags on the front. He sat next to a guy with a yellow baseball cap. Can't pick him up, Tony. Yeah, we can't pick him up in here off of our camera because we're losing light. Stills uh, photography. Can you pick that description up? We're looking for him at the moment. He's next to a yellow baseball cap. Yeah, he's next to him. He's got a white T-shirt on with two flags on it. Yeah, if you go into a place to only here's resurgent 2248. If it is the youth we're after, he wants locking up for DC Armstrong. And the Yorkshire spirit really coming to the ball. The trouble which led to all this sophistication began 20 years ago. It appeared again in the European Cup. And there's some trouble behind the goal mouth, as you can see. There was this pitched battle in Birmingham. A fan died when a wall collapsed. But it was this incident at Odsall arousing fears of another Bradford fire that provoked the greatest police effort to end what they feared was a conspiracy of violence. There'd been arrests after one police operation. But it was officers going undercover for six months in Operation Wild Boar who were able to pinpoint some serious offenders. After a series of raids, this was the Hall of Weapons. The police felt they'd gone a good way towards banishing the violence associated with Leeds United. But unknown to outsiders, the trend towards undercover work has quietly continued from Bradford to Bournemouth.
We've been inside the intelligence unit of West Yorkshire Police. We can't show you the faces of some of the people here. It would endanger their undercover work. Officers travel to Leeds matches, mingling with the crowd and accumulating a mass of information. Others take video pictures and stills photographs. This unit anticipated the Bournemouth trouble and a full team of spotters, undercover men and photographers led by this detective were at Bournemouth last weekend. The unit have some very worrying observations of the significance of events there. We saw the, um, the crowd throwing at the police, assaulting the police and, and constantly um, trying to, to force entry into the ground. The hooligan element who have been controlled all season by the police, both home and away, and the restrictions put on them by the club themselves, and the work that the club has done to try and prevent hooliganism, um, they have decided to show themselves in order that next season, when they come against the old rivals, they, they have established themselves as a force to be reckoned with. You saw people who you had seen before involved in trouble? Yes, definitely. definitely. We're talking about a yob culture. Uh, now, this is a group that's not easily identified. Uh, the police are positive in their ways of trying to identify them. We will continue with that. Are there people at the heart of this that you fear will be there to cause trouble next season? Well, yes, and you've got to look at the, the culture itself that's distinctly broken into three groups, a very young group, a middle-aged, uh, a middle-young group, age group, and then an older group. So we're talking about a development here that youngsters are seeing as being attractive. Now, we've got to stamp that out. We've got to stop that. And the other way of doing that is by deterrent and gathering intelligence and identifying these people. My personal feelings are, having been down to Leeds for 25 years, that yet again we're going to get the old, old wars starting again. Liverpool and Leeds were always enemies, on the field and off the field. Manchester United on the field, off the field. More importantly, Chelsea were always a confrontation on the field and off the field. And I think that's the areas where we're going to get uh, the problems next year. The club too are looking ahead to next year. They say, and the police agree, that they've done everything in their power to prevent hooliganism. Alongside West Yorkshire police, they've hired their own security teams who mingle with the crowds. This week, the supporters club banned provocative T-shirts. They have their own identity card scheme. They implored fans not to travel to Bournemouth without tickets. Well, really, they should stay at home. And, um, you know, there's cinemas that are going to have it on and the telly's going to have it on. Um, if they do go down there, which a lot, a lot probably will anyway, there's not going to be no stopping that. But, you know, um, enjoy it down there, you know. Look at that. But some, I nursing what they said were bruises children. from police batons, admitted there'd been many without tickets. They give us 2,000 tickets, right? There's going to be 8,000 people without tickets. So what are you going to do? What are they going to do? They're going to get angry. Most did you could. all have tickets who yeah, went to yeah, Bournemouth? I, I, I didn't, didn't have one, one but well, I was I mean, meant to have one the, the, the club and everybody were pleading with people yeah, like you but not I to go to That's why they went, went because if you say there. don't go, they do. And it wasn't just Leeds, they were from no, everywhere. I put it to you, I mean, the club said yeah, people like you don't go, but, so but weren't you letting your club down by going? No, not really. No, because I was meant to have a ticket when I got down there. Somebody meant to have a ticket waiting for me when I got down there, and the lad never turned out with a ticket. If the problems become one of what to do with people who turn up without tickets, the intelligence units say that some police forces themselves must take a share of the responsibility. The police are to blame in certain areas of the country in as much as when there have been a lot of fans go without tickets, to get rid of the problem on the streets, the public disorder problem, they've allowed them to go into the ground, sometimes without tickets, to get the problem off the streets. So if the idiots know that they can get into the ground by either purchasing a ticket at inflationary prices or by the police allowing them into the ground, they will continue to go. And we've got to bring our act together to stop the police allowing them in at any price without a ticket. What I want you to do, therefore, is to work as a team with a view to establishing the identities of the people who have caused all the mayhem down in Bournemouth. 
And that's really this group of Leeds detectives are meeting for the first time this week to look at their intelligence unit's videos. At the end of the briefing, we're going to go through the film again to try and identify any of the Leeds hooligans who we know were down there. As you know, uh, we have quite a number uh, in this division who are frequent attenders on the away matches. There's also the chance to assess how the fans at Bournemouth became involved in all the trouble. Particularly interested is the commander at the Leeds ground, Chief Superintendent David Clarkson, a veteran of public disorder from the Battle of Orgreave to the Toxteth and Chapeltown riots. I think that people set out with to meet their friends, their colleagues, their, their fellow supporters at a football game, in the Cop, in the East Stand, in the South Stand, it matters not where. And I think when they all get together, the brain goes out of the window. And I think that's when it happens, when the atmosphere becomes so electric that then the people with less self-control lose and become yobs. Among those arrested at Bournemouth was Adrian Wraith, a Dewsbury shop fitter. He admitted conduct likely to cause a breach of the peace and was bound over in the sum of £500 for two years. He'd travelled to Bournemouth without a ticket to join the celebrations. It may be the last time he joins his team. Well, when it wakened, it started out just as a weekend out, like a weekend break, and ended up now I'm going to be, end up being banned from Ellen Road for life and probably from watching the other football team. And really, I didn't do anything wrong. What do you think about Leeds and the reputation of both the club and the fans now following the weekend? Well, it's ended up because they've been pretty steady for the last couple of years. They've got back and there's not been much trouble anywhere. Now they've just got back to square one and we're fans in English football again. Hi, right, gentlemen, we have the board meeting to discuss the affairs of this weekend following the promotion of the club. We have the civic reception on Sunday morning. We have the dinner on Sunday night. Also, we have to discuss new prices and also the consequences of Bournemouth. Today, the board of Leeds United met to consider the future, the joys of promotion, the problems of a newfound notoriety. But whatever they were discussing, they were aware that many other factors with a bearing on their future are beyond their control, in the hands of the government, the football authorities and the police. Next season, West Yorkshire are preparing to deploy up to 500 officers at Elland Road, Meanwhile, the intelligence unit have compiled a brand new report on a growing threat from a hooligan group elsewhere in West Yorkshire. So if we look at uh, a successful police operation in 1987 called Operation Wild Boar, which led to the arrest of many Leeds football hooligans, to a current problem where we're looking at a particular group in West Yorkshire that are traveling uh, throughout the country, creating problems where they're ambushing visiting fans leaving the football ground. They don't actually go to the football ground to watch football. It is a problem, it's not going to go away, and we've got to face it. The world's press were at Elland Road this week to observe Leeds United. Unfortunately for the club, some were there for what they would regard as the wrong reasons. But like it or not, they'll be watching closely next season for the famous and the infamous face of Leeds United. Well, joining me now to discuss the problems and possible solutions are Leslie Silver, the chairman of Leeds United, Dennis O'Toole, the assistant chief constable operations for West Yorkshire Police, and Merlin Rees, a former home secretary and Morley and Leeds Labour MP who lives within the shadow of the Ellen Road ground. Leslie Silver, if I may start with you, the police say you've done all you can. I know that the club has tried very, very hard to eradicate hooliganism, yet it's still there. What can you do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, it's heartbreaking. We've worked hard for five years to try and get to a stage when the club can not only be successfully, successful on the field, but also off the field. And we've thought, to some great extent this year, that we've beaten it. We've had 46 games in the season, 23 at home with no trouble, with the cooperation of the police, 23 away, one of which, of course, is this massive disaster. It is heartbreaking. But I think it's important that we don't let ourselves be beaten by the hooligans. I think it's important for the city, it's important for the club, it's important for the whole spirit of football. What we're wanting to do, first of all, obviously we need closer cooperation with the police as far as rearranging key fixtures as occurred at Bournemouth. That was obviously an, a, a mistake. In hindsight, easily to, to comment on that point. But nevertheless, a mistake. 
The second thing, obviously, is that we're putting a new computer in. Any um, member of the public, any, any supporter that was involved in the problems at Bournemouth and are being charged or being advised to us by the police, they will be banned from Leeds United home and away. So that's a start. But I think the important thing is increasing cooperation all the way along the line with all the authorities that can have something to make it work. Dennis O'Toole, how do you feel about the lengths <coughs> that you have to go to, to to police what is, after all, just a sporting event? Well, I think I would disagree with you slightly. As far as the police are concerned, on Saturday afternoon, it's not a sporting event. It is a major public order in incident and problem, in other words, with a potential for public disorder. Uh, it is very, very expensive in police manpower. It costs the community charge payers of West Yorkshire a lot of money. It costs Leeds United a lot of money. Uh, but I don't see any other way to do it. There's the potential for violence. is always there. was demonstrated at Bournemouth and can uh, occur again at any time. And yet, despite all your sophistication and your high police involvement, it still happened. I mean, yes. can you stop that kind of riot happening next season? No. Uh, the, the short answer is no. Uh, we don't have the problem at Ellen Road for all sorts of reasons. I think, firstly, that uh, all the supporters of Leeds United, or people who claim to be supporters, including that lot, uh, can actually get into the ground. And that was a problem at Bournemouth. We have a very sophisticated operation at Ellen Road, have had for a number of years now. Um, so, it, whilst it's easier at Ellen Road to police, uh, it's not so easy to police large crowds away at smaller grounds. Can I move on to you, uh, Merlin Rees? We've seen in the film there that these hooligans are organised. Are you disturbed by that? Yes. Uh, indeed, as I watched it, I, I wanted to ask Mr O'Toole, from the information that you've collected in the new unit, there's a unit at uh, the Home Office for other purposes, international, we heard about three cultures. Is there an organisation? Is this new? What sort of organisation in it? To what degree is it organised? Is it, as I've been told, right-wing elements in it? What's it all about? Well, to answer that, I, I could spend an hour. But sure. basically, uh, our inquiry, Wild Boar, which was started three years ago and led to some very successful prosecutions and some stiff prison sentences for the ringleaders involved, established that there was quite a degree of organisation uh, amongst people who went to football matches specifically to cause violence and not to be interested in the football at all. It may be that that sort of organisation, which we had arrested, which we had broken for a while, is coming back and maybe we'll have to repeat our wild boar operation uh, to, uh, to look at it again and I'm quite prepared to do that but I think it's it's not easy to answer the question positively no. all the indications are that there is some organization but it's fairly loose may I ask Nun Rees what would you do um, if you're Home Secretary what should the government do is it a government problem it's a police problem and West Yorkshire have a good name in this respect the club have a good name in cooperation with the police and in the days when the violence was in the ground they've had a good name. What can a government do? It can, it can change the law. I am told, I was told, I'm told again, that there's plenty of law for arresting people for grievous bodily harm. You can have another act of parliament and it looks good. So everything is there. But you see, I suspect it's allied with the sort of reports we've had from the Home Secretary, the previous Home Secretary, he's new, this chap, is there was violence in rural areas of this country. Not poor people. Drink-related, uh, lager louts on a Saturday night in Kent, in Essex <coughs> and all over the country. What is this new phenomenon that's happening? It's not going to be solved by the club and by the police in West Yorkshire alone. It is deeper than that. Would it be solved if they spent six months in jail? I doubt it. There is something that we've got to get at. And then my last question to myself that I'd ask my officials is, why my city? Is Leeds different? Is it different from Manchester? Is it the same as Chelsea and as Millwall ought to be? We've well, got to know more about it. And I think the tragedy, the tragedy of the whole exercise is that we've had such a successful run. That's right. Things have gone so well for so long. Uh, uh, with the police, with the club, with the city, Things were going so well. well we why this is it one. Leeds then, Mr Silver? Why? I don't think it is just Leeds. I think it was a special situation at Bournemouth, which was a mistake. We had a situation when we had a key game, uh, a promotion challenge, a relegation problem, a small ground, a bank holiday weekend. These were circumstances. Throw them all together and you have an explosion. But any one of these circumstances changed may have well made it possible to have a reasonably trouble-free exercise. But 
we've, we've gone through nine months of football at Ellen Road with no trouble, and yet we have this explosive situation in the wrong place at the wrong time. It spoiled a fantastic week for Leeds. This should have been the week of jubilation after such a long run in the second division. But all we've had this week is heartache, aggravation, and a diabolical press, now, and something that we're very upset about. Now, next season, you're going to have less space at Ellen Road because of the implications of Correct. the Taylor report. That will cause you problems, won't it? Well, that, that's something that we have to face. We are in the process of facing it now. Yes, our restriction, uh, I think our average this season uh, that we could take in was about 32,000. It would possibly be under 30,000. Yes, it's a problem. It's a problem that the board will have to tackle during the summer in conjunction with the police. What we're concerned about is that we have a natural support in Leeds for about 40,000 people for a big game when we're going well. Now, what are we going to do with that 10,000 that want to come in? That's going to be the problem. It's something that, too, that we have to work out. That's going to be my problem, because uh, if the support increases, and Leslie Silver is absolutely right, the 40,000 is easily there, then if they can't get in, uh, and, and other arrangements aren't, arrangements aren't made, I'm going to have them out on the street outside the ground, I suspect. But, but you are determined that that kind of problem will not happen at Ellen Road? You, I'm they, determined that we shall do all we can, and we shall deploy a very large and a very expensive police presence to try and deal with it. Well, we have been successful at Ellen Road for a number of years now. I think, Dennis, one of the things that we, we learnt last weekend was the fact that by putting these uh, closed-circuit television structures around the city, where we had about 6, 5,000 to 6,000 people in these uh, arenas, they saw the game, they enjoyed it, they got the full atmosphere of the game. Now, if we are successful next season, and I believe we are and we can be, we can possibly extend that as a, yes. a short-term yes. solution. Yes. But it's expensive. It costs money. I mean, last weekend, the club lost £5,000. We had full houses at every venue. So there, is, there are problems. The answer, eventually, obviously, is to expand Ellen Road. That's what we would like to see. What happens if the Football League uh, ban Leeds fans from travelling away from home and possibly say to visiting fans they can't come to Ellen Road? Well, so be it. That's what will happen. I mean, we're not going to break the law. We, we, we are a law-abiding club. If the Home Secretary or if, the, if we are told by the Football League or, or by the authorities or by the police, no visiting fans or no away fans, whichever way you want to juggle it around, so be it. But that is the penalty we have to pay for the period until we get this matter beaten. Well, in recent, totally. that's a possible answer, banning Leeds fans from travelling? Well, it may be, but it's not the job of a Home Secretary to run a football club or run the police. It's to ask questions, find out what's going on. I don't know what I want as a community charge payer in Leeds, to use the new phrase, is th those people, it was said on the screen, they are finding out who they are. I want them brought to justice. I want their neighbours to know about them, of the shame they've brought, not just on the city, because they're not all Leeds people by a long chalk. They brought shame on West Yorkshire. And more people know that, the better. Yeah. And a very quick word, Den Dennis O'Toole. Yeah, well, I think that if the FA ban Leeds fans travelling away, that's a wonderful thing to do for the press. It's not very helpful and it's almost impossible to enforce. I really should think that uh, they should think again about that. Well, gentlemen, let's hope that uh, the problem, in fact, uh, will be uh, sorted out uh, next season. Dennis O'Toole from the West Yorkshire Police, Leslie Silver, the chairman of Leeds United, and Merlin Rees, thank you very much indeed. Let's hope that uh, this time next year we're celebrating something that's good on the field and not off it. From all of us, good night to you.